In this video, we're going to uh, discuss financial statement analysis. Okay, so what's the purpose of in analyzing your financials? First, it should benefit internal users, meaning the employees of the company, the managers, and the, these internal users need the financial reports or financial analysis in order to make strategic and operation, operating decisions in the company. Meanwhile, um, there are also external users, let's say potential investors, who want to check how a certain company is doing. Aside from the actual numbers on the financial statement, they can compute to see if the company is liquid, if the company is profitable enough, or if they are going to earn by investing in the company. Now, what are the tools for analysis? Here you can see in this slide that we have three types. You have the horizontal analysis, the vertical analysis, and the ratio analysis. For horizontal analysis, this means that the company is comparing its performance across time. So for example, um, San Miguel is comparing its performance in year 2013 versus year 2014 versus year 2015, and so on and so forth. By doing this, the company can see if they're performing better in year 2015, or did they perform better in the previous years. Now for the vertical analysis, the reason why this is called as such is because if you're looking at the financials, what you're doing is you're comparing the accounts vis-a-vis -vis the other a total value, let's say, total assets or total liabilities and equity. So your eyes go downward to upward. I'll delve into this deeper later. For ratio analysis, this means that we compete for certain ratios using the financial data and we compare that ratios to another company's ratio or an industry's ratio and so on and so forth. Now let's focus on horizontal analysis. These are the items wherein you can compare companies' financials across time. You can use comparative financial statements to see the different values in, let's say, year 2014 versus the peso values in 2015. Another way to go about horizontal analysis is to look at the percent changes. So you have here in the formula analysis period amount minus base period amount over the base period amount. So for example, you have your financials for year 2016 and you want to compare it with your financials with 2017. Your base period amount, this should be the older year. So in this case, that's year 2016. That will be your base period amount, let's say. And then for analysis period amount, that will be the peso value in your 27 financials. So you can do that for, let's say, sales. You can compare by how much did sales grow from year 2016 to 2017 using this. Now for trend analysis, this is another way to look at the percentages. You can get the analysis period amount divided by the base period amount times 100. So using my previous example, analysis period amount would be the early, the more recent year, so that will be 2017, divided by the base period amount of 20, 2016. So, for example, if you had sales amounting to 2,000 in year 2017, okay, put that in your analysis period amount, and then compare that with your base period amount. So let's say you had 500 pesos in your sales in year 2016, that will be the value here. Then multiply it by 100, and you'll see by how much did the sales grow for 2017. Okay, now you can actually see this in your workbook on page 125. This pertains to Leland Corporation in short problem number one. So suppose you are given a sales value for 2010 amounting to 300,000 pesos. And then you have the following values for 
year 2011 and 2012. And let's say you want to compute for the trend percentage for 2012. So, okay, we can actually go back to the slide. So this is the trend percentage this in this last portion. Analysis period amount divided by base period amount times 100. So let me just pull up my calculator. Okay, oops. Okay, so we have your, my calculator here. I'll just put it here. So we need to compute for the trend percentage for 2012. Now applying the formula in the previous slide, let's just type in the analysis period amount, which is 360,000, okay. divided by the base period amount, which is 300. Okay, we have 1.2 times 100. This shows us a 120% value. It means that, okay, if you have a 100 value, it means this is your base percentage um, amount. We're starting at 100. Now, since you have 20 here, it means that from this point up to this point, the sales became 100, uh, increased to 120%. Or in other words, if we actually make use of the other formula, let's see, this second one, the percent changes, which is actually what I prefer in analyzing financial statements, analysis period amount minus base period amount divided by base period amount. Or I usually think of it this way, new, ye new year, okay, the period during the newer year minus the old year divided by the old value in that year. So let's try that. So new, which is 360 minus the old value, 300. And then we divide that by the old value. Then we multiply by 100 to express it as a percentage. We see 20. This means that from 2010 to 2012, sales grew by 20%. You may be wondering, why are we computing for the percentage equivalent of these peso values? Well, actually, in the real world, some companies don't want to talk about numbers, or sometimes these numbers are huge, let's say in millions or billions, and these aren't always exact values, so it's they're more comfortable with discussing it using percentages. So yeah, you're learning how to speak the language of business. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. This presents vertical analysis. Now, there's, thing, there's this thing we call common size statements. Common size income statement would be to convert all the peso values into percentages and assigning that 100% value to the net revenue, or in other words, net sales. There's another type of common size financial statement, which is the common size balance sheet. And we convert the peso values to percentages again with the total assets as the 100%, or also since assets equals total liabilities and equity, total liabilities and equity would also be represented by 100%. And then you also have your cash flows, so you can see where your money goes. Okay, let's take this as an example. So we are presented with a partial comparative balance sheet of a certain company. And let's say we want to get, we want to use vertical analysis. As the name suggests, vertical means your eye is moving this way, okay? So let's try to apply that for 20, 2009. Let's say you want to convert this peso value into the percentage, into percentages. So let me pull up my calculator again. Okay, so we have my calculator. What we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a percentage of your total assets. So... Doing that, 
one four two nine divided by the total assets, which is your one hundred percent, four three nine eight. Okay, and then we convert that to a percentage. I'm going to multiply that by one hundred. This means that thirty two point forty nine percent of total assets is actually comprised of accounts receivable. Another way to go about it is let's say you want to look at inventories. Okay, so you can just multiply 1471 divided by 4398. Multiply this by 100 to convert into a percentage. And then meanwhile, 33.45% of total assets can be attributed to inventories. So you can actually do this for each account. And by doing so, you convert each of them to percentages. Now, if, for example, you're talking with another businessman and he asks you about how much of, let's say, plant property and equipment it would be part of total assets, instead of telling him or her the actual value, you can just say, oh, that's about X percent of total assets. Some companies even use vertical analysis for another year, let's say 2010. And so they convert each of these accounts to percentages and then compare. So now we'll move on to income statement wherein we're going to use a vertical analysis. Okay, since this is the income statement, our base amount or our 100% value would be this one, net sales. This one and this one. Let's focus on 2009 first. So let's say you want to see what percentage of net sale would be attributed to operating expenses. So to go about that, what we can do is divide the operating expenses for 390 divided by 10,381, which is the base amount. And then we multiply that by 100 we can see that 42.29% of net sales can be attributed to operating expenses. Or we can also do that to net income. So let's say 322 divided by 10,381 okay, times 100. So it means that 3.10% of net sales would be net income. Okay, so similar with the balance sheet common size statement, what we're doing here is we are converting the peso values to percentages vis a the, the base amount, which is in this case the net sales. So again, just like the balance sheet earlier, what other companies do is they also compete for the percentages here in 2010 and then compare if there's a difference. In my next video, I'll focus on the ratio analysis and this will actually be the meat of this chapter. So stay tuned.